No offense, y'all, but seriously, I failed to see the psychology behind pre-debut standing. Obviously, I'm not talking about groups that have had all of the members announced and introduced or have had pre-release singles or variety content. I'm talking about you company stands who jump on the ship when a group has only been rumored for a future debut. I swear, some people were standing ASPA before Karina was even born. For me, one of K-pop's biggest mysteries is the catastrophic fall of the girl group GWSN. For a while, no matter how much I looked at it, I just couldn't figure out what the hell went wrong here. They had everything that I needed in a group. Mia was on the cusp of becoming one of 4th Gen's greatest female main dancers. Soryoung was a classic main vocalist. Could have been amongst one of the best in the industry with sweet vocals tonally reminiscent of the vocal queen herself, IU. Minju was a top tier visual, could have been the face of all manner of potential makeup brands. Anne was a talented underrated rapper that rivals most of the current 4th gen female rappers of today. Something tells me that if she had been given more time in the industry, she could have really gotten the chance to prove what she was capable of. So Kian was an amazing dancer in her own right. Lena was an adorable little bean with an infectiously goofy personality. And so, -so was a soft beauty fierce on stage, while also carrying a quiet spark of charisma that often got to shine the most during their variety appearances. Together, these seven ladies made up of one of K-pop's most sonically unique girl groups in the industry at the time. Though at the time of debut, many assumed that they were simply borrowing elements of their aesthetic branding from groups like Luna or WJSN. But it's unmistakable that GWSN still has the most distinct discography in K-pop to this very day at least as far as I'm personally concerned. With all of that in mind, it's easy to wonder where it all went wrong for them. How the hell did their company, The Wave Music Group, fuck this all up? You had seven of the most promising female rookies under your employment, but still somehow managed to fumble the bag so badly that former employees had to pull back the velvet curtains and put all of their shady bullshit on Front Street for the whole world to see. Between various lawsuits, Allegations of mistreatment, neglect, and outright fraud, the Wave Music Group has managed to fully expose themselves as one of the most incompetent companies in K-pop. So, how did GWSN go from being one of the most promising rookie girl groups in 2018 before suddenly vanishing from the industry altogether? Only to resurface with the most recent news of their sudden lawsuit and departure from the Wave altogether. Well, that's what we're here to explore today. So, Let's get on to the story of one of K-pop's biggest missed opportunities, the frustrating journey of GWSN. We'll begin this story with Kiwi Pop. Yes, I said Kiwi Pop. Now already you might be asking the most obvious question. Who the hell is Kiwi Pop? I thought you said that GWSN was managed by the Wave Music Group. Well, hold on, be patient. We'll get back to that explanation soon. Kiwi Pop, a subsidiary of Kiwi Media Group, was headed by composer Kim Hyung Suk. Not much is known about Kiwi Pop before the birth of GWSN. What is known is that GWSN wasn't their first spin on this ride. Apparently, they had previously debuted other musical acts, such as Kilograms, Nick and Sammy, and Wabble. Unfortunately, not much is known about any of these people either. And trust me, I tried to track down some relevant information on these acts to get a general sense of Kiwi Pop's management style. And what little I managed to find was this. Kilograms was a former contestant from Show Me The Money seasons 5 and 6. He's been active since 2017, which, oddly enough, not only was that the year he debuted, but also the last time he released any music. According to his Wikipedia page, he's reportedly still active, though of course, under new management. Nick and Sammy were a pop duo that first rose to prominence in 2017, with the release of their first single, Baby You Love Me. They would later quietly disband at some unknown point after having been inactive since 2020. And Wabble is a sister duo who debuted in 2016, 
They've gained some general success with a couple of single releases and a few OSTs under their belt. Information about their careers from here on is super fuzzy. Some sources claim that they later moved under the management of MMO Entertainment or are now under Wake One. Other sources claim that they're currently being managed by a company named Music Paradiso. One site even claims that they've already disbanded sometime around 2017 or that they're simply on hiatus. I'm not sure which of those claims are true, but it's not really important at this point in the story, nor is it relevant to GWSN's journey. So let's just move on. Though not much is known about any of Kiwi Pop's previous musical acts, one thing that they all have in common is that they would all jump ship from the company before 2018, likely because they foresaw the eventual shit show that would later play out following the debut of Kiwi Pop's first ever girl group, GWSN. Now, with their general experience in the music industry, you would expect Kiwi Pop to have some basic idea of how these things work, right? And for a while, it seemed as though they did. On June 14th, 2018, Kiwi Pop would release a teaser image for GWSN, the name being an abbreviation of their Korean name, Gangwon Sanyo, which in English is essentially girls in the park. I believe there might be some deeper meaning behind the name than that poorly dumbed down explanation I just gave. But I don't speak Korean, so that's the most basic description I got for you. Sorry. Regardless, it's not like it would matter anyway. Especially since Kiwi Pop seemed to have put more thought into naming the girls than managing them correctly. Don't worry, we'll circle back around to that too. With the release of the teaser images and the opening of their social media accounts, Kiwi Pop would further build hype for the girls, promising to fully reveal the members' names and faces on June 18th, 2018. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and claim that I was looking forward to this group. I'm a girl group multi stan, but I'm not much of a pre debut fan, mainly because it's just not in my nature to latch onto groups before hearing any music. Hell, there are some stans who open their wallets and pre order an album before they've even seen a single strand of hair from any of the members especially if the group debuts under the big four. No offense, y'all, but seriously, I failed to see the psychology behind pre-debut standing. Obviously, I'm not talking about groups that have had all of the members announced and introduced or have had pre-release singles or variety content. I'm talking about you company stands who jump on the ship when a group has only been rumored for a future debut. I swear, some people were standing Aespa before Karina was even born. Okay, I'm done teasing y'all. Let's get back to GWSN. So as the days would tick by, the girls would eventually be formally introduced as Minju, Lena, Anne, Soso, Soryoung, Mia, and finally Sokyeon, who was first introduced to the public as a contestant on Produce 101, where she came in 30th place. As further promotion for the upcoming debut, the members would perform at multiple busking events all over South Korea, attend smaller performances in middle and high schools, and even held several video events from their Facebook page. They uploaded dance covers from popular songs on their YouTube channel as well. They'd also landed a reality TV show on Mnet named Gotcha GWSN, which aired on August 2nd, 2018. With each of the members introduced, a reality show on the way, a logo revealed, and a group name, the girls were set to debut on September 5th, 2018 with the song Puzzle Moon from their first mini album, The Park at Night Part One. Now, when I say this song was a bop, I mean it was a bop with a capital B-O-P. That heavy techno beat against the backdrop of those bouncy synth instrumentals had my ass vibing. This was a solid debut track from a virtually unknown company and an unknown group. I was genuinely surprised. The problem with so many groups who debut under smaller companies is their overall lack of industry connections. This often means that even the most talented groups won't have the funding necessary to pay for high-profile producers and songwriters for their songs, so they sure as hell won't have the money for other costs that go into birthing and maintaining a K-pop group. According to JYP Entertainment statistics taken from this 2021 article on Soompi, it can cost up to somewhere 900 million KRW just to train a new K-pop group. That's around $786,000. A lesser known company, especially one as fresh in the K-pop game as Kiwi Pop was at the time, would likely only have two shoestrings and a prayer to fund their group. 
Okay, obviously I'm exaggerating a little there. Because even though Kiwi Pop was virtually unknown, they clearly had the coin to invest in GWSN in the beginning. Their music video for Puzzle Moon was top tier. A stunning debut project with some excellent production value, as can be seen from just these clips alone. This was no cheap endeavor. Which makes me wonder, where the hell did all of this money end up later on in GWSN's career? Because it sure as hell didn't go to any of the producers or the employees. Again, we'll come back around to that. I promise. First, we need to talk sales. GWSN's first mini album, The Park in the Night Part 1, would ultimately go on to sell 9,301 copies. Not bad for a girl group of this size. Not bad at all. There are Nugu groups who've been in this industry for years and still can't pull in even a fraction of these numbers for their albums. GWSN was on the come up. Ready to become one of 4th Gen's pioneering titans for an era that was still in its infancy. From this, Kiwi Pop might have been thinking, hmm, maybe we can make this work. We've got Mia, the androgynous Japanese queen who'd instantly managed to land her own solo fandom from just her aura alone at debut. So Kyun, who'd entered the group with stands of her own from her time spent on Produce 101. Minju, who was sure to wow audiences with her stunning visuals. The adorable Makne Lena, whose chaotic 4D personality was sure to make her a future meme queen in the Twitter spaces. The bright and bubbly sweetheart Soryoung, and the chill, witty, no bullshit rap goddess, and so so, the quiet but deadly charismatic Taiwanese beauty. GWSN had hit the ground running with something that some girl groups don't get until much later on in their careers. A distinct sound and an easily recognizable brand with music that was a beautiful amalgamation of chill synth pop dance anthem title tracks and b-sides that pretty much explored every genre under the sun. From the quintessential sweet pop of Shy Shy, the lullaby-esque of Let It Grow, reminiscent of early A-Pink, to Tropical House Pop, and the sweet stylings of one of the most beautiful mid-tempo bops I've personally ever heard. With this moderately successful debut under their belts, the girls would finish off 2018 with a fandom name, Mama nominations for Best New Female Artist and Artist of the Year, and they would also manage to nail down a so Success New Artist Award. From here, the girls were ready to take on the world. Unfortunately, the only thing that was in their way was also the one thing that was supposed to be on their side, their own company. <laughs> 